We are going to interrogate how technology has been a catalyst for change, particularly as we've been navigating our way through this pandemic. And of course, this event is being sponsored by MTN, and I look forward to welcoming our sponsors this morning to actually walk us through what this relationship with the Public Sector Forum has been, and to also hopefully share some insights into what the plans are for 2021. It's always a privilege for us to be part of this forum. It's not a privilege that we take for granted because then it gives us a platform where we get to interact with our clients. We still are not out of the woods yet. We still appreciate the fact that we are still in the middle of a pandemic. But what it has forced us to do is that we've realized and we've learned new ways of work. In the past five years, only 11% of CIOs are there in the world that are women. And we need to start changing that environment. We're going to start to put women in front. There is a lot of things that needs to be delivered in this country, especially in government. We are starting to fall behind from a technology perspective. And how do we collaborate as government agencies in making sure that we can deliver what our citizens are looking for? There is no greater disability in society than the inability to see the person as more. So when we actually refer to the issue of women, we must not look at what women are unable to do. We must actually look at women as having the potential and endeavor to always encourage them to become contributing members of the society. I was one of those learners from the township. So access to information, I think I need to mention that actually plays a major role in terms of the career choices yeah. that people end up taking. I did well in high school and I was always told you can be a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer, or whatever those choices are. We also need to start from the grassroots level, whereby we encourage kids to look at IT as another career, not only as this intimidating career, but then we also need to demystify it and say, how do we get into the space without intimidating them? And if you look at the innovations that are coming up at the various entities and the inclusion that we are bringing women to, you know, there's specific focus and we need to increase the pace. Yeah. We need to be deliberate. And one of the challenges is that women who are bold and strong and outspoken, they normally get criticized for being aggressive, for being the angry black woman. One can have a lot to add to the discussion and one can articulate themselves quite eloquently, but it's happened a lot of times in the boardroom where a woman is presenting a point and this is a point that happens to be in an area of the expertise and a male counterpart will jump in to say, let me clarify what she's trying to say. It's not just about women, it's black people in general, or rather people of color. 70% of tech jobs in this country are white male dominated. Desmond Tutu had this to say, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. And that goes to all of us as we sit with our privilege, men and women, May we realize that each of us can contribute in a meaningful way to invite more people onto the dance floor to dance with us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the privilege of your time. And I wish you an incredible and restful festive season. It has been an honor.